Welcome to the How Soccer Explains Leadership Podcast, where we explore leadership principles through the lens of the beautiful game. Welcome back to How Soccer Explains Leadership. Thanks again for being a part of the conversation, man. We are at the end of a year. We're also at the end of a half. I'm Phil Dark, your host. With me is my co-host, Paul Jobson. And we are so excited. Looking back on this year was just amazing. We're going to do a little bit of that in this episode. We're also going to look back at the first half of season 10, which is crazy. Hopefully you had a great Christmas. This is coming out just after Christmas. Hopefully that was an amazing Christmas with friends and families. Paul, how are you doing, man? Man, I'm doing great. I'm with you on kind of looking back on this uh, this year and just, you know, you think about it like, yes, we have some great guests, but when you go back and actually look, there's some that you kind of forget about that were during the year and you're just like, oh my gosh, like what an incredible year we had with guests and just a lot of, a lot of, a lot of things that, that I definitely learned through this year. So I'm looking forward to, to diving into that. And I think the day of this release is birthday of my number two in the household. He turns 12. On the release date of this, so always a fun time. And uh, you want to sing happy birthdays. birthday right now, and you can just no, share he, that he, with him. I don't think he listens to the show. Okay, okay, uh, so probably not. Sorry, probably not. But we it, know Marcy doesn't. Part, We've established that. So she, she, she's actually, you know, commenting on how good the her episode was for sure. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but we we celebrate. There's six in our family. We celebrate five of the six between November and February. And then we have an outlier in May. So this is Thanksgiving, Christmas, and five birthdays in a, in a few months here. So it's a it's a really fun and very expensive time of year on the Jobson house. Yes. Yes, of course. And you have to figure out how do we do Christmas and then have a separate special celebration that is not just wrapped up into Christmas. So yeah, one of my good, good friends has his birthday on Christmas Eve. So mm. that's a that's always an interesting conversation of how that is done in in their household. So they, I think they go to like noon, it's his birthday, and then afternoon it's <laughs> you know Christmas Eve. So you know things that you got to do, which is which is great. And no doubt you guys are doing that there. But dude, we got a lot to cover in this episode. Yeah, I, I, I love our banter, and we can we'll all do that off the air. I'm sure people will just be like, well, what what's how are we going to survive without that? But I think they'll figure it out. Um, but I just want to get right into it, man. We had do it. this, this half, I mean, this season 10, man, we got, we kicked it off with Dan Russell, man. It, it, just to, you know, it's always good to kick it off with, with a Brit, you know, but also you know, Liverpool scout, he's doing the, uh, the Darius stuff. And I, 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 I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm still not quite sure. Um, Sean <laughs> Smithson, Kevin O'Brien, and then, you know, your favorite guest ever, Marcy. Mm-hmm. And man, what, what a half, dude, I'm, I'm just going to throw it out to you. What were, what were some, some things that jumped out to you, whether it's theme of the four or just different things about each guest that you, that you have. Yeah. You know, I think what Daniel Russell presented was, is, was really, you know, sometimes we have episodes where we'll dive into things that we all kind of have knowledge base of, and we can talk through and have opinions. I think. Daniel was a great guest because there was a lot of things he's doing that was just new information, like things that I didn't know whether if I knew that was going on or not, I didn't know a lot about it and learned a ton about kind of some new things that, that, that he's doing. And, and really, obviously the, the, the title of his had, had to do with networking and how he kind of got to where he was to me, always the story of how somebody gets to where they are is really sometimes the most intriguing piece. And he has a great story and I, and he's, yeah. he's really a young guy and I, I'm, I'm curious to see how he's you know, going to continue to grow and, and network his way into whatever's next. But he was a great, you know, that piece of him was, was really cool because it was something unique to me that I didn't really have a, not a lot of knowledge, knowledge yeah. of, I don't know if you want to just start with one at a time or I can, I yeah, can yeah, you know, them, but like, I'm just I do want to say, yeah, you know, I also want to just say, you know, we, when I talk about the year and stuff, we're going to get into just so you guys know what's coming your way this episode. We're talking about these episodes, but then we're going to do the, our top three episodes of the year or so. I say or so because it may be like we have an honorable mention or something. And then we'll get into books that are were the best books slash, you know, documentaries, movies that we saw this year. And so you definitely want to wait for that because there's some super, super good resources there. That I no doubt, uh, no doubt you're going to, they might even be like post Christmas gifts you can give people. 
So it would have been nice to be our, like the how soccer explains leadership gift guide. You know, maybe that would have gotten more downloads. We got to think about year. that for next year. Next, next year, year, we'll figure that out. Mm-hmm. We can even have a catalog that we can put out or something. You know, you never mm-hmm. know. It could be amazing. But we're going we're gonna to do that towards the end. But yeah, let's just go. Yeah, let's just go one by one here. So yeah, I, okay. I agree with that with Dan. It was cool. It was, it was just a fun conversation, first of all. We, you know, lots of laughter. It's just, you know, similar. He's a, he's a buddy of Phil Smith. So, you know, something's going to go, you know, a little different than you thought. But uh, like you said, the story of just... I, it never ceases to amaze me how get how people get to where they are and how it's just it's just you know things things that conversations you have that you never know where it's going to go or you know that that i mean heck the the this podcast is one of those things you know it's just <laughs> it it started cuz i was just talking to a buddy and like hey let's just get on and talk about Manchester United stuff and boy, it turned, I'm, I'm glad it took a turn on that, especially lately with United. That's been, that would have been a depressing conversations, I think. Yeah. But I'm so grateful where it turned and where it's gone. But the people that we get to talk with and who knows what's going to happen from a lot of those. But also just, you know, learning about the scouting aspect of it, the, the app. What I love about what him is, is he's really about helping people in different ways. And all the things that he's doing have that similar similar thread of how do we get people to to kind of achieve their goals and their dreams and how can we help them take that next step and what does that look like so definitely go back and check out that episode we're gonna go a little quicker on each on each episode here because we do have a lot to cover on this but but i I would say definitely that episode was one that like you said i learned a lot but also just was encouraged encouraged by his story and how he's just being able to go one thing to the next to be able to help people get where they want to go. And I, and I appreciate yeah, that yeah. other, other centric I, there. Yeah. Now, before we move on to past them and just to kind of throw out something for people to kind of pay attention to in that episode, there's a little piece in there where he talks about how he onboarded with, with one of the organizations he works with. Now he kind of latched himself on to the people who were really successful in that organization as this was a sponge. And um, yeah. I took that because obviously I'm transitioning into something k- kind of new, you know, with SRUSA and kind of have done the same thing. And that was, you know, something I think we don't think a whole lot about. It sounds like common sense, but it's like, I'm going to do it on my own. I can power through this. But like, yeah. Latch yourself on to those that are having success. And uh, so focus in on that. When you go back to listen to that episode, it was encouraging and helpful. Yeah, it was. That was, that was super good. So the next is Sean Smithson. We got Sean, good friend with FCA sports and the executive uh, vice president of club sports. And he's doing some really, really cool stuff. I get to be in a Bible study with him every, every Thursday with the faith-based coaches, the United soccer coaches. And that's, that's just a, a, been a great way to get to know people and go deeper. But that, you know, the title of that is eternal perspective. And I think a lot of what Sean talked about in there is that, you know, what really matters, right. And, and what is that eternal perspective that we can have as we're going through different things that we do. Um, you know, he talked about making disciples using soccer. He talked about, you know, life, uh, uh, just the calling that he has on his life. And, and so, you know, what'd you think of that conversation with, with, with Sean? You know, always an encouraging conversation and just, you know, again, another person who's looking to serve others through, through what they do. And, you know, always cool to hear their stories and, you know, a great story in there about how he tried to call a timeout during a soccer match um, as he was yes. learning the learning the ropes <laughs> of the game. But yeah, just, you know, again, just a really encouraging conversation with somebody who's serving a lot of people through through what he's doing and just the aspects of, of FCA. And, and what's funny is I, I don't know that we spent a ton of time highlighting FCA as an organization through through his interview, but it just kind of goes to show that they're, you know, a lot of these people that we interview, they're doing things because they, they love it and they're, they're, they're passionate about it and their, their values align so closely with the organization. That's not about the organization, right? It's just about like, yeah, especially for him, what God's calling him to do. There just happens to be an organization that helps, you know, make that happen. So I, you know, I think we got through that episode too. Like, oh my gosh, I don't think we highlighted FCA much at all. And it just, it hit yeah. me. I was like, well, it wasn't about, it never is about the organization. It's, it's about right. uh, how God's using them. So I, that, that, that hit me through that as well. 
Yeah, you know, it's funny. There were great stories. That one about calling time out, the one with Bernard Longer and that idea of, you know, they lied to me, right? Remember (laughs) that where like he won the Masters and he had won other tournaments and he's like, they lied to me. And and he, you know, was able to share that with the kids at the Nationals to be able to say, hey guys, you know, it's the trophy's great, but it's not about the trophy, right? Like it's not about, it can't be about the trophy. There's so much more to life. And then the, remember the, you can't forget Jello night, right? Oh, you know? right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. yeah. So, yeah, you know, he shared a story you about heard the episode. Yeah. If you've heard the episode, it's not that kind of Jello night. So go listen, go listen and find it. out the FCA or the, the, uh, you know, he was a youth leader version mm-hmm. of Jello night. Definitely go check it out. It, it not definitely not what you think. And it's actually, it could be quite violent. Um, so we're going <laughs> to leave it at that and we're going to move on. Cause I did, I really, I love that, that interview. And there were some great poignant stories that you will remember and they hopefully will be able to impact your, your life, your coaching, your, your home, you know, everywhere that you're leading. Um, the next was Kevin O'Brien, your bud KP or OB. OB. I've heard different OB. Okay. Yeah. But his, his email is KP O'Brien, but, um, but yeah, but OB is what, you know, I'm learning is the, is the the jargon you know that's the locals that's what uh you know the insiders I, that's are calling that's what it. i knew that's what i knew of his name before i actually knew his name so yes. he's always been ob to me um and if yes. i hear kevin i'm like who's who's kevin but who's yeah that? Kevin, kevin o'brien i think i even called him kevin on the podcast it kind of threw me off like wait a minute it was who's weird kevin yeah but yeah great i mean didn't last long you you used ob most of it so yeah yeah but yeah you know I love having people that, I mean, you're probably the same, love having people that we know and, um, on the podcast, because there's always things that you still continue to learn about them and their story that maybe you didn't know, or just really allowing them to share, you know, what they do and how they do it. And, and OB is, you know, I think one of, one of the best in uh, what he does and how he does it at a, at a Christian university, you know, there obviously are others, but Kevin does such a great job. In fact, just actually helped place a kid at his college the other day. It was just a perfect fit for, for OB and his program, um, and how they, how they go about things, but his story of how he got to where he is another great, a great story and a great process that, that, you know, I think young coaches can learn from again, as we talk about, you know, there's not one path to being a head coach. Uh, we talk a lot about, you know, what are, what are we actually coaching for? You know, what's kind of the end game. You know, we talk about that similar to, to what we talked about in the other episodes of, you know, the, the empty cup, you know, what are you playing for? Are you playing for a national championship? And when you get there, what's, what's at the end of it? Uh, again, that's another common theme through this half of the season is, is that, that part of it, right? Like, what do yeah. you, what are you playing for? What's the deeper root of that? And of course, Kevin, and I have overlap where he was an assistant for a season with me when I was at Presbyterian college. That's how we met. And He's nice enough not to get into how, how bad of a soccer player I was during that time, but how he destroyed (laughs) us on the, on the pitch as he, as he would jump into play. But yeah, just a great, just, I thought I'd like to hear what your thoughts on that. I mean, I know him, so my, my stuff kind of overlaps with, with what I know and what we talked about, but love to hear your thoughts on him and that conversation. Sure. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. It was interesting. You mentioned that briefly, but he was very, very, uh, short on the an- on the answer about coaching you. So I'm, I'm thinking either, you know, he was holding back cause it was, you know, not, uh, appropriate for, you know, young a- years or you didn't make much of an impression on him. I don't know which it was. It was, you know, it probably, you know, it, it couldn't have been the latter. It had to be the, I don't, part. I don't think I made a big impression on OB until later in life. Where he's like, <laughs> Oh, you went to Presbyterian. Oh, you were on that team. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I remember so-and-so. He's like, oh, yeah, I remember that guy. You were yeah, that, that guy team. was amazing. So, yeah, 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 totally, yeah, for sure. Totally, Yeah, um, but I loved, I just loved the overarching just feeling. You get with some people talking with some people like this is the real deal, you know, and that what he's saying isn't just words coming out of someone's mouth. It's something he really believes, Right. It's kind of that idea of when Steve Jobs would be marketing the computer, it was about the why, like he shared what he really wanted in a, in a, in a product, so to speak. And I just hear from Kevin, it's like, this guy believes what he's saying. He's living it out, you know, being able to watch him coach and seeing how he was, you know, spending time after the game one-on-one with, with different players, talking with different people, obviously as the whole as well, like the, he is a guy who is living out a calling 
on his life to coach and to do ministry through sport and to make disciples through this game. And, and even as he was talking about, to be able to, to see it as a ministry and a division one program to be able to do that and be successful in it is, is amazing. And like I said, during that interview, like it's, it's, you want to be the coach that other people would want their kids to play for, right? Like other coaches would want their kids to play for, especially And that. And that's what I really felt with him and in that conversation and what I've heard about him as well. And so to be able to have that conversation and kind of have it confirm what I'd heard from so many people, and I haven't heard a single person say something negative about the guy and from different areas too, uh, you know, in Nashville and, and other, other parts. So that's, that was something that really shone through in that interview. We also talked about the, the fact that bison and bisons is both uh, grammatically correct as the plural form of bison. So that was something that was a very important thing that we um, settled here on this show yeah. as well. well. So we always um, talk about how much we learn on these, these shows. And that's another thing that, you know, we definitely learned that I would have never even known to consider. Um, you didn't even know, even know it was a thought. You didn't even know well, it was a mm-hmm. thing. Mm, I yeah. didn't. I didn't. So, um, and Kevin didn't either, apparently. He just, he just accepted <laughs> it. He didn't even yeah. question or challenge I think, the grammar. I think he realized that it was above his pay grade, I think is what he said. That, you know, hey, I just that go along true. with it. I'm told that's, that's what true. it is. And, I, and that's, that's a smart, that is a smart coach, right? That, that is know true. Your lane, yeah, you don't. Know your lane and stay in it. You know? It would have had to change the scoreboard. I mean, there would have been all kinds of, of massive changes that they would have had to do. Probably hundreds of thousands of dollars marketing change. <laughs> yeah, it would have been bad. Yeah. So that was definitely um, not the most poignant moment of the conversation, but it was it was something. So, something. yeah, I just think overall there were so many great leadership lessons in there, even talking about, you know, when he was with the Charlotte Eagles, talking about coming up through the ranks and mm-hmm. learning from different people as an assistant and, you know, as a, a, you know, under some amazing coaches that he got to coach with um, and be a part of his life and to just glean from that, as you talked about, you know, with with Sean and with, with Dan, just learning. That was another theme. I mean, I think we had that theme of the, the empty cup, so to speak of the championships, the emptiness of it, but also that idea of learning from those that you are coaching with or working with in different, in different environments. So loved that, loved that conversation. Definitely go back and listen to that folks. You, You know, if you've already heard it, go back and learn again, but if you haven't definitely go back, check that out. All right, so you've been waiting for this one. You're like, can we just get to Marcy? Um, I teed this up. I teed this up yeah. to be the last one of, of, this, yes. of the, the thing. So, yeah. yeah. Well, so that-, that was, you're like, she was, she actually said yes, like 10 months ago, but you're like, I want it to be the last interview of the <laughs> year because, yeah. and the last interview of the half. So that was, yeah. that was well played. Well played, sir. Yeah. So, you know, I'll start. Cause okay. you know, you'll just, you'll just take the next hour and a half and talk about your beautiful bride, but, um, totally. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it all. So with Marcy, I mean, it's not going to surprise you. The thing that sticks out of the whole interview is her unorthodox bucket list item, which yeah. I just still am like, I don't get like I, and yesterday just to make sure like that I wasn't missing something. I did go for a run and I reminded myself mm. once again that I'm not only not made to run, but I really don't ever want to do that again. But her bucket list item, man, I'm again, it has to do with running and it has to do with the desert. Go listen to it. And no doubt you'll be blown away by that just alone. But yeah, I, I really not surprising. You know, I it was cool because you obviously know all this stuff about Marcy, but I, I, I know we've hung out a few times, right? Like you talk about her all the time, obviously, like we know that, but to hear kind of what drives her to hear what's behind that intensity that I, that I have seen her coaching and playing. So to see kind of what comes under that, her siblings, you know, to have, first of all, that all her siblings are, have an M to start their name was impressive when there's eight of them. That, that's, that's impressive. That, that's some creativity in, in parenting. I imagine it was confusing as all get out as well, but that was just hearing about what shaped her, the different people that shaped her. The thing I loved about it was her coach 
that she kept going back to was her childhood coach who coached her from, you know, during her 10 year old up in her youth. I think that's so encouraging for youth coaches out there to hear that. Not just, oh yeah, it was cool. Kind of got me started, but like, that's what taught me about how to coach. That's what taught me about who I am as a, as a player and how I can blend faith in, in my coaching. And I, there's few who do it better than Marcy, I think out there, or maybe, I mean, she's up there with, as far as that integrating faith into coaching and then now taking it to warrior way and being able to coach the, not only the kids, but going down to Guatemala and hearing that story about the, the little girls, but also the grown men and pros mm -hmm. and like that respect that she can garner because again, she's the real deal. Again, that, that, that common theme of when you are the real deal that shines through, you know, she said what one guy <clears throat> called her like sweetie or honey or something on the right. way out to the field. Like, but that doesn't fit. Like, it's just like, no, I'm going to do my job. I'm going to do what I'm called to do and let the chips fall where they may. Right. And to even hear how I loved hearing that, how you guys are a team. And even when she stepped back from the head coaching gig to the assistant to kind of, as I said, the unpaid consultant, mm -hmm. um, that she was always part of that. And I love that. I just loved, I, you know, I just loved seeing that with you and her and the interaction. I loved seeing you dote on her. I loved seeing you like, like, oh, but you got to share this part of it too, because <laughs> that was really cool. And, you know, I actually went home. I'm like, Becca, we got to get you on the show. That was super cool. Um, she's like, yes. what would I say? I'm like, you'd be amazing. It'd be incredible, you know? And um, we had another PE teacher at one point, right? But, but to be able to, to do that, it was, it was, uh, I think it was a special moment of the show to be able to watch that with you two interacting where I kind of got to moderate that conversation. Um, it was fun. It was cool. Yeah, it was, it was fun to have her on, obviously, you know, selfishly, but I, I just, I can't, I can't, uh, you know, I've wanted her on for a long time. So have you, uh, I know she's wanted to do it, but finally it worked out schedule wise to get her to sit down and do it. And, um, I just think she has so much wisdom to share and just has, has so many great experiences and just has a way that she, uh, God's gifted her to, to share her experiences with others that she just does in a way that not many people can. And, you know, even to her training, the men's team in Guatemala, you know, a way of doing things that really only she, I think only she can do uh, that God's gifted her with. And, you know, talking about her, you know, her bucket list item that that's in the show, you know, I've always said there's a difference between the good athletes, the great athletes and the elite yes. athletes and the elite athletes have, they just, they teeter on the edge of crazy. And, uh, -huh. uh that bucket list item will, will support that theory of mine, that the elite athletes teeter on the edge of, of crazy. And that's what drives them to an elite level right. because they're willing to take chances to do kind of elite things that are a little bit out there take chances that are, they're not crazy. They're not out there. They're, they're, they're measured, but their measurements are, are willing to take it to a, a small, a, a, a tinier degree that, than most of us. We want that, that margin and that support of safety. And I would take that into a lot of the decisions that, that she helps me make too. And I think it's always fun when we get to talk to elite, elite athletes. And we have one at the beginning of, of 2024, we'll talk to as well, teaser for her, but yep. that, that always just stands out to me when I have those opportunities. And so it was good to have her on to be able to share, share that and what she's doing and what God's blessed her with through, through her ministry and, and family. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So folks go back and listen to those episodes. As you said, the UTs, that was good because that was a good preview into the next half. We have the next interview we've already done and it is another elite athlete and it is another elite athlete that has some, you know, crazy things that, that, that she did and has done and is doing that definitely are, and you say teeter on the side of, of crazy. I, you know, sometimes you, it goes over the line. Um, yes. I think. And at least of my definition, but, um, people do things for fun that would be, I think, torture for me. Yes. So, Agreed. and that just says how we're all wired very differently and we're made to do different things too. So that's a, a good, uh, good message there too. So, okay. We are going to shift gears now. So that was the <clears throat> halftime show portion of this show. Now we're going into the end of year, end of 2023 
this year we had over 10,000 uh, listeners in, in over, I think it was 68, 68 countries, wow. something like that. So I guess over wow. 67 countries because it was 68 countries. There you go. Um, which is, you know, a lot of those have one, but still, you know, good shout out to like, Counts. you know, Senegal and, you know, Zambia. But it's pretty amazing, the reach, you know, yeah. and the fact that we have 100 and what is this, 139 no, 135, this 135th episode, like crazy. 10 seasons, crazy. The the people we've been able to get on, which we're going to get into a minute with just our top three when you say that, and just even those last four we talked about, like people from all over the world who are doing incredible things, you know, to have national championship coaches on here, to have people who are, you know, scouting for Premier League teams, to have people on here who have been elite athletes, Olympic champions, and, you know, to have... People who maybe we've never heard of for the most part, but have incredible things to share with us and that we get to keep learning. As we've said, we're kind of selfishly get to keep learning. And I am so grateful for all of it. And so I just want to, you know, ask you, Paul, mm -hmm. what were the, uh, you know, top episodes? I'm just going to say top episodes for you. And it's so hard because what we don't want to say is we didn't think all of them were great. They were all incredible. I even look back to like your recruiting episode that you did. It was just so, it was packed of really good stuff that I've already shared with a bunch of people. But what were the episodes that just stood out above the rest this year for you? And we're just going to yeah. say Marcy was a given. So other than that one, like that's a no brainer, of course. So yeah, that's you, number one you of all say number your wife. ones. Yeah, right. you can't say you're one of all number ones in, in the <laughs> event that she might listen to this episode. Also, I have to say her episode was the best in my mind. Yes. Um, yes. But but it is crazy to go back and look through, you know, just the different people that we had the opportunity to talk to mm -hmm. and, and the things that we that we learned from them. It is really hard to nail down, you know, which ones were, you know, I don't say the best almost in, in lining it up as to what, what was the most impactful for me. Right. Exactly. The year, right. I think that's kind of at this I moment through too. at this right? moment and in, in, in yeah. what we're doing and in, in, in life, because it, it's hard to say like that, you know, Marguerite wasn't a, a great episode. It yeah, was awesome. Exactly. You know, and you know, if I was still coaching at, 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 at a university, that might be one of the ones that I, that I would mention, but it, it's not, you know, and that's crazy. And then, you know, JP Della Camera, you know, a guy that you grow up listening to, you know, on television, like, yep. wow, what, that's a great opportunity to speak to somebody and learn from a different resource and whatnot, just his humility and all those things that you get uh, that you don't expect from somebody who I consider to be a soccer superstar, at least in our, yeah. in, our in our country. But I, I narrowed it down to, to three for, for me. And these are the three that really stood out to, to me the, the most for, for, for multiple reasons. And I think Dr. Spencer, Jeff Spencer was, was a, was a great one for me. His story, another elite athlete who, you know, teeters on that, that line that I, I consider. And, and I just, I, I crave some of those relationships because I'm not wired that way. So I'm intrigued by it and I'm, I'm blown away by people like that. And then seeing him take that into his career with other elite performers, right? Elite athletes that he works with yeah. and just, you know, how he speaks and his humility was a great episode for me and very encouraging in a, in a lot of ways. So that's one, one for me. Another one would be Skip Gilbert uh, that we interviewed. He's the CEO for U.S. Youth Soccer. Really, you know, I've known about U.S. US Youth Soccer my entire life, right? But to have the opportunity to talk to somebody who's leading that organization and really understanding what they're doing. And the, the one thing that just continues to stick out to me is just kind of part of their mission, which is to, in a nutshell, paraphrasing, to make the game enjoyable for everyone. You know, and that, I'm like, okay, it's not about developing youth players. It's not about this or that. It's about making the game fun. And I agree with that, that as an adult, you want to be able to still enjoy the game and not be burnt out. So just the heart behind, I think one of the most important or organizations in, in our country when it has to do with youth soccer was encouraging to me as somebody who obviously cares about the game and cares about the, the people in the game. So that was a good one for me. And then probably the one that. Wait, don't say yet. Because I know what it is. You do? Yeah. You want to guess it and I'll say whether you're right or wrong? Yes. Well, now that you, okay, who is it? Well, no, because I'm going to go my two, my other two, and then we're going to, I'm going to say, is this your number one too? 
Okay, okay. I How like that. We're going here. This kind of game show. You like that? Can you can you feed over some games? Name that guest. <laughs> right. And who are your two? Who are your two? Before the, okay, so before I will top. say, my I, I you know Jeff Spencer for sure. Like that was, I mean, I had eighteen clips that normally it's about nine that I'm pulling out. I had 18 that I had to call down to, to the nine or 10 for that episode. So that one was just so chock full of leadership goodness. Like the nuggets that we talk about there, it was like, you know, it was probably that what the early gold miners got in their pans when they threw it in the river, all of a sudden it's just full. That one was so good. And, um, so humble like this is a dude who is the coach for life coach for bono you know he probably got free tickets to the sphere people are dropping 600 <laughs> bucks right yeah um tiger woods lance armstrong like <laughs> crazy branson like what so and he rides his bike like 60 miles one way like you know so uh, 120 round trip every day just like just an easy ride down from whatever like crazy cool stuff great dude love that love that interview interestingly like skip was probably right on the right on the edge i i love that interview especially hearing him talk about his experiences outside of soccer that informed his experiences inside of soccer yeah, that story about U.S. tennis where he talks about Andy Roddick and how, why could he not crack the top three or four? And they just said, watch those guys play. And they saw different movement patterns because they all played different sports growing up. So even hearing that specialization conversation in that, in that episode was really, really good. But I would say the other one that would be in my top three was, as you, you mentioned, like, I mean, Marguerite was a great interview. I love the interview with Josh Glover and, and Andrew Simpson and Becky Burley and Amanda, all the, like, they were so good, like going down Keeley and JP and Steve Axel at the beginning, Kerry Sanchez, like all of them were so, so good. But Keith Tozer was my other top three. That conversation with him was just, again, a guy who has been part of this game for so long. The number one draft, the first ever pick in the MISL was pretty cool. But hearing his humility again, go back to that word, like that seeing these great leaders and how he brought his team, made his team into a bus and like to the, to the senior leaders and like, Hey guys, what would you do in this game? And then have the coaches sit in the back of the van and just listen and then do those things. Yeah. In the semifinals of the playoffs. Right? Like that was going that was really cool. So the number one episode, I named pretty much every other episode. So am I right on who it is? I think so, because I don't think you named this one. Yeah. So I will say it's Graham Daniels was my number one. Was that yours or no? Let me let me open the envelope. Yes, it was Graham yes. Daniels. Ding, 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 yes. ding, ding. Yes. So Achieved Identity versus Received Identity was the name of the episode. He talked a lot about that. I say this because it was simply, what episode did I recommend the most? Well, that's what and I was, was going to say. Is that I think most people that listen to this consistently probably would have guessed that this was our favorite episode because I think we reference him in most episodes. Yeah. Yeah. So what else were you going to say about it? Well, I, I think what it comes down to for me, you know, when I talk about, you know, I said, what, what am I identifying with, you know, during this phase of phase of life and what we're doing and all that, just everything that he like, one, I love his stories, right? Our storytellers are usually some of my favorite guests because I just, I love stories. I love hearing stories. I love wisdom mm -hmm. from guys have gone before me and done, done amazing things. I love the stories. And how he tells his story and he has a great story and how he's, you know, really taking his, his faith and merging it with athletes, you know, which is what 
what we're doing with warrior way, right? Like with the younger kids, it's like, okay, I just identified so much with his, his path and what he's doing. And I just, I, I lean into, to what he's doing, how he's done it, how God's, you know, grown his faith and grown him and how God's multiplied him as a disciple through his industry. He doesn't work for a Christian organization. I mean, he does, but his, his club that he works for yeah. is not a Christian club, but he, he is admired. He is a, a man of great wisdom and, and somewhat authority in his industry. And I just, I just admire that. I'm just attracted to, to who he is as a, as a man and somebody that I look up to and, and want to model kind of myself after as a, as a Christian coach and Christian leader. Yeah. All of that. And the stories, like he talked about just the, it was funny, like just the yeah. wit, the, 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 the amazing God stories there. Go listen. If you haven't listened to that episode, like this makes me want to go back and listen to it again, honestly. Yeah. The wisdom is off the charts. The stories were off the charts. Like all of it was so good. And even as he gives some examples of some of the conversations he have has had with atheists mm -hmm. and with other people and talking about the different, you know, social things that are going on right now and people coming up to him and having questions and how he just has these humble responses. And then to hear, you know, how he, you know, played in the, played at the championship. He's like, yeah, I was never that good. I didn't get to play in the premier league. I'm like, yeah, championship is still pretty good. But again, that humility, but then as he said, that would get him into some rooms, but he then went and got his PhD because he knew that would get him into all the rooms. Right. And, and to know that, you know, to be able to get in the premier league room, you got to have this. So I need to go get this. And, but not be so he could be in those rooms, but because he knew that he knows that's his calling to be able to, as he's the director of Cambridge United, that'll get him into some rooms, you know? So I love that idea as well. Like folks don't, just rest on your laurels because it's good enough, right? As we talk, good is the enemy of great a lot of the times. And um, if God has something else for you uh, and you need to do something else, then do that something else. So not just for the sake of pride and whatever, but yeah. So yeah, I, I, I love that. I love that episode. And I'm so grateful we were able to have that conversation. And as you said, like people have gone before us to see how he got involved with Christians in sport back in the day where there were like four Christians in all of English football. Well, and, there's, he tells a story where he's talking to somebody and they're like, you, I think you're yeah. the only guy I know in the, in the league that's yeah. a Christian or something. Well, like he that. said that he goes, he goes, are there others? And he goes, <laughs> yes, there's four. He says, there's four and he named three and he said, who's the fourth? He says, you are. You yeah, know, right. and so that's when he's like, well, I got to go do something about this. So that was, it was just really cool. So go check out that episode. If you, if you have listened to it, go listen to it again. Definitely worth it. And if you've listened to it, you know that I'm not just saying that it actually is incredible. And if you haven't heard it 100%, you know, go listen to that episode in the conversation. So, all right. And that the two of the three we agreed on. I like that. Yeah. And then the fourth was, I, I mean, it was definitely a, a close, a close one on that. So, all right. Now we're going to go into our year end recommendations. I'm not, I mean, I have recommendations, top books. So why don't you do your books? Okay. Do you have books and like documentaries or anything or just, just straight no, up books? No, I, I stayed with books. Um, I don't know okay. that I did a lot of documentaries this year. There's, uh, there's so, I'm so far behind in so many things, the documentaries and even some, even some books, cause we have so many great recommendations. I mean, folks, if you're, if you're not getting anything out of this, you're at least getting some great book recommendations. Yes. You know, one of our guests actually texted me earlier today about a book that she's reading that she thought about us. It's like, you guys need to read this book. So I don't want to spoil future guests. So I'll, I'll leave that, but my, I've got books. So I read. Uh, I, I read more books this year than I thought I did. So I go back and started looking because I document what I what I read. And I'm like, oh, I did read more books than I thought I did. So I actually did have to, have to narrow it down. And again, like like our guests, you know, I think even last year I was reading a lot of parenting books. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's the phase right. of life that I'm in. But 
uh, I would say, I don't think there's real, I have even a, a soccer book, uh, but my, I'll give you my three. All right. And they're not in any, any real order, but just things that I was going through this year that, that these were very helpful books, winning the war in your mind, Craig Rochelle. Um, that was a, a just a, a fantastic book. And I, I, I don't know if you've read anything by Craig Rochelle, but just how he, you know, easy reads. You know, I think even the audio book, he's, I think he does the own audio and his own book. So that's, you know, I'll sometimes go back and forth from audio to, to print and go back and forth. And so winning the, winning the war in your mind is a, is a great book, just kind of how to think through processes and how to just manage, manage your, your brain when things can be, the world can be a bit overwhelming. Another book uh, that we read as, as the Marcy and I read together with, you know, our life group members was, uh, God has a name by John Mark Comer. Just another, just another great book, just reminding us, you know, about, mm -hmm. about God and, you know, it really, really a very basic book about faith. Yeah. And I highly recommend that. And, and of course, if you really into John Mark Cromer, again, I like easy reads, very yeah. funny, like very, like yeah. interacting type of book to, to go through. So that's that one. And then the, the third one I'll, I'll talk about is called Range. And I think I've actually mentioned it on this podcast a couple of times by David, David Epstein. And, and really we talk a lot on here about specialization, you know, and the, the pros and cons, you know, about it. The book dives heavily into, I think the tagline is how, how generalists are succeeding or, or doing a better job than doing a better job. By in the world generalist specialists. triumph in a specialized world. There it is. You're, you've got the tag and I, and it's, it's a great book. I mean, it talks about like how we focus on guys like Tiger Woods. And those are, those are the exceptions, you know, the, that's not, that's not normal. And it talks about other guys, he's a tennis player. He talks about that, you know, played soccer, played all these different sports and became a great tennis player when he was like the late teens, you know, because of his other sporting thing that he did. Right. And so, you know, we talk a lot about specialization on this podcast. And so I'd, I'd kind of like, I'd really just highly recommend that book. It just, it's such a very well thought out and researched thing that he talks through when it comes to, you know, specialization and how almost as a culture, we've kind of run with it as being the thing to do when in reality, research shows that it's not. Yeah, for sure. That was one of my books because yeah. you recommended it. I listened to it hmm. and I loved it. I was like, amen, amen. So I'm going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to put in these, this list in in the show notes. So I'm going to just rip through mine because I have more, but I, but I will put them in the, the show notes as kind of a, the top, the top books and check them out. I have more because I, I, I want to let you guys know, like we don't just get recommendations and not read them. So I, a lot of my recommendations are actually, or a lot of my top 10 list are actually books that were recommended this year or over the last couple of years or multiple times. So three of those books in my top 10 are the Joshua Medcalf books, Chop Wood, Carry Water, Pound the Stone, and Win in the Dark. Those have been recommended, I don't know how many times on the show, or talked about, maybe not recommended as official recommendations, but talked about. So I was like, I better read these. And they are, they're written in that fable manner and amazing, great leadership books. They're so simple. As you talked about, simple, easy reads. I listened to them with my kids, which was the other bonus about them. Like great things to listen to and talk about with my kids. Lots of great principles that go into leadership and go into being a great teammate. You know, as I've talked about this, this tagline now that I'm kind of, is my, it's encompassing everything for these, my, my players is lead and love well and be a great teammate. Mm. And I feel like those books go through a lot of what that looks like. A lot of it's the internal individually to be a great teammate you got to put in the work yourself but to be a great teammate you also got to care about your other your other and you got to understand them and you got to connect with them and you got to you know do your best for them so that was one the other <clears throat> the other range was one and then other ones that were recommended one was open an autobiography by andre agassi that was recommended read that amazing incredible i've already talked about that on the show Another was Quiet Leadership by Carlo Ancelotti, mm -hmm. which was so good. I am not a reserved person, but to learn, I learned so much about 
<clears throat> about connecting with with players and connecting with people in that book. He is a guy who studies his players. He is a guy who does a lot of the stuff that we talk about on this show. Strongly recommend Quiet Leadership by Carlo Ancelotti. Not a, you know, he has never coached Manchester United. So that, you know, that, that alone should let you know that it was a great book because I'm not just pumping it because he's a United guy. But Leadership as an Identity, Crawford Loritz, Patrick Gilliam recommended that book. And I strongly recommend it as well. So good. And what was the other one that was recommended that I will recommend? That may be it. Then other ones just that are great books. So these are kind of like Phil Dark recommendations that I read this year. The Captain Class by Sam Walker, The Hidden Force That Creates the World's Greatest Teams. Very, very good book. Great for coaches, great for leaders, just to see what, what are those things. And a lot of just research on, you know, is it just being a loud person? Of course not. But, you know, those type things. What are those misnomers? What are those things that we hear about? Are they actually true? Or is it just, you know, something we want to, we want to say is true. Boys in the Boat, it's as this releases, it's actually out in the theaters as a movie. Read the book first. Strongly recommend it. Such an amazing book about one of the, I, I think, I still will say it's probably my favorite book about sports. Um, and it's about rowing, but it also brings in the 1936 Olympics. Such an incredible story. Incredible story. And then the last book I will say is The Life We're Looking For. It's a book by Andy Crouch, Reclaiming Relationship in a Technological World. <clears throat> so much of leadership is seeing persons, which is what he talks about in that book, not just seeing people. And super, super, super good. So strongly recommend that book. <clears throat> the last thing we will do here on this episode is I'm just going to run down a few documentaries that I've seen this year that are that are well worth your time the soccer ones are beckham so good on so many levels not just because he played for united his perseverance his commitment not just to the soccer but to his family commitment of victoria beckham is something that was you know because he did a lot of things that a lot of people would have left uh, I'll let you watch it, but she was very committed, or she is, and it was really encouraging. That Peter Crouch film is a fun one. It's about Peter Crouch, his story. Again, his perseverance, his resilience, commitment of a coach to him, even though he didn't score in 18 games as the Liverpool striker and they stuck with him. Things like that. Really, really good. And then one that's kind of a soccer one, but it also talks with, about Wayne Gretzky and it's Pele, Wayne Gretzky, and Jerry Rice are the ones it focuses on. It's called In Search of Greatness. And it actually taught, it actually uses the book, very, the guy, what's the book he talked about? Oh, the sports gene. The guy who wrote the sports gene uh, is, is very involved in that and talking about is it, ju it's not just genetics. And all of them pretty much to a person said, if, if I had to do the combine for my respective sport, I would have not been very well thought of. <laughs> But Wayne Gretzky and Jerry Rice, I think, did okay in their respective sports. Yeah. And then the last one is one, or the two, were Breakpoint and Full Swing. One is about tennis, one's about golf. But it just goes in the inner mind of the tennis players in the tour and golfers on the tour. And very, very good. Again, learning from other disciplines, learning from other sports, both in search of greatness and then those two. Super good. So a lot to do there. You know, again, could be. Could be some of those books you could get as post Christmas gifts or birthday gifts or whatever. But any parting thoughts, Paul? No, on, just on the just, year. Uh, just a reminder, you know, if people didn't get to write all that down, you'll have that in the in the show notes form. Yeah. But part, parting words, I mean, I, I, you know, I've just, I've just really enjoyed doing this with you, Phil. It's been, it's been really a lot of fun. I'm getting so much out of it, selfishly, but partner with you on this has, has been awesome. And I just am really grateful to the folks that are, that are, that are listening, that are getting things out of it. I just hope that we're, we're being, you know, a blessing to them as well. And obviously we, we talk about it all the time. We'd love to hear 
more from, from our listeners of what they'd like to hear or recommended guests as we enter into 2024. But 2024 is already looking bright for guests that we have lined up. And again, just, just thankful for that we get to do this and that people are interacting and, and I think are, are getting a lot out of it. So just grateful and looking forward to, to 2024. Yeah, absolutely. I, and one thing in 2024 we get to do is the convention, which is coming up in two weeks. That's right. Right. Yep. And, you know, we're both going to be there and I, I am going to, you know, we have, we have an ad, Paul, that I, I, I oh. get to do an ad read. How cool is oh, that? Let's do it. Nice. So folks coming up is this convention and I, I get to do this ad read, but I'm, all, I'm the, before I do that, I'm just going to say, go. If you're a coach, man, it's, it's such a valuable thing. If you're on the West Coast like I am, it's finally on the West Coast. It's in Anaheim, and it's been a while. But here's the ad read. I'm going to do this. In my, I, here, here we go. Right, folks, this Let's might be it. the first ad read we've ever done on this show, and I'm excited for it. Don't miss your chance to join the most eagerly awaited soccer coaching event of the year. Get a special discount with our exclusive promo code. Leadership24 is that promo code. You'll receive the registration for $425. It's currently much higher than that. Experience the United Soccer Coaches Convention, an engaging five-day gathering of the soccer coaching community featuring live full-field demonstrations and enriching educational sessions. Join thousands of other coaches in an event that's becoming a yearly highlight. Connect with soccer's elite, including Javier Zanetti of, of Inter Milan, Laura Harvey of OL Reign, Jermaine Jones of Fuego FC, Paul Jobson of Warrior Way. All right, I didn't say that, but that's what I said. Leonard Griffin of Calmin Soccer. Carla Thompson, San Diego Wave FC, among other renowned figures like Paul Jobson of How Soccer Explains Leadership and Warrior Way. You do not want to miss seeing in person. And are you looking to elevate your coaching experience? Join the Advanced National Diploma Course when you register to refine your skills and enhance your coaching profile. Secure your spot at the discounted rate of 425 using the promo code we talked about earlier, leadership24. Hashtag stronger united 24. How was that? Was that good? Really good. That was good. And and what's crazy, they need to they need to update the script because Laura Harvey is now the US women's national team coach. Yeah. No. Right? Well, Emma, Emma Stone. Emma, oh. not Emma Stone. Emma Stone an actress. Emma Hayes. Yeah, yeah, you're right. My bad. Man, can you edit that out? Maybe. I don't <laughs> know. I probably won't. You know me. Um, <laughs> oh, all right, folks. can make folks. fun of me all they want. So. It's great. You know, I'm, I am excited about the convention. I will be speaking there uh, on two, two different uh, presentations and very excited about that. One's on sharing your faith or how to incorporate your faith in your coaching. And the other is all about DISC and got some great panels for that. So, Paul, you'll be I'll there be, with uh, SRUSA. I'll yeah, I'll be wandering around with SRUSA and some other folks and just want to, if anybody wants to meet up and, and talk and share ideas, I'm available. I'd love to, love to chat with whoever. It's a great, great event. Love doing it. So glad to, to get back out to it this year. Yep. And I also will be there wandering the halls. We will have a booth there for How Soccer Explains Leadership. So stop by if you are there. And yeah. And we will be there uh, if we are not somewhere else. So with that, <laughs> how do you like that? Was that very that was non-committal? Good. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was good. All right, folks. Well, hey, so grateful for each and every one of you listening. So grateful that you're taking what you're learning and you're using it to engage and to be able to be better, continually be better. That kind of Kaizen philosophy of 1% better every day. Hopefully some days are 2 or 3% better. But if you want to learn more about anything that we talked about on the show, Warrior Way, Coaching the Bigger Game, DISC stuff, you can check all that out, uh, including now these, these lists will be in the show notes at HowSoccerExplainsLeadership.com. And as always, folks, we hope that you take what you're listening on this show and you use it to be a better coach, a better spouse, a better parent, a better player, a better leader in all that you do. And you continually remind yourself that soccer does explain life and leadership. Thanks a lot. Have a great rest of your 2023.